Boa noite, boa noite quem está aqui, boa noite a quem está chegando. Temos aqui a honra de estar aqui junto com, conosco, no nosso canal, nada menos, nada mais, Mr. David Schenkel fez um, um álbum, um álbum sensacional, Trice of Steel, e vai falar um pouco da carreira dele no Menor, vai falar da carreira dele e tudo, e a gente espera que ele esteja no Brasil esse ano com a gente, numa turnê, é muito bom ver o David ao vivo, performático demais, né, é, é, reggae bang é na essência que a gente vê ele no palco, o amor que ele tem, a música, né, o amor é sensacional. Transmita isso e, por favor, manda ele falar o boa noite dele. Okay. So we have here David Chenko, the legend himself. <laughs> oh, David, we thank you, first of all, to be here with us. Thank and you so much for having it. me. <laughs> I, I'm glad that I finally made it. I want to apologize to all of you for the last time on June 5th. We, we had some technical difficulties with the new MacBook Pro, and um, we finally got it all worked out and happy to be here. And thank you to their fans, my fans, for, for being patient and here to do this wonderful interview and answer questions the best that I can. And again, thanks for having me, guys. Bom, ele agradeceu é, pela presença, né? Nossa presença também. E agradeceu pela oportunidade de estar aqui com a gente. Pediu desculpas pela última vez. E a gente teve alguns problemas técnicos. É, ele tentou com o MacBook, tentou com o iPhone, tentou com tudo que ele tinha em casa mas o link do StreamYard não funcionou da outra vez. E é isso. O que importa é que a gente conseguiu remarcar essa data e estamos aqui hoje com o cara em pessoa. E vamos dar início né, essa entrevista. Vamos lá, Eduardo. Vamos lá, vamos, vamos lá. É, o, o David está é, no Heavy Metal há muitos anos. Eu acho que eu sou até mais velho que o David. É, isso, isso é de praxe, né? Falar um pouco como foi o primeiro contato com a música, né? As primeiras influências é, dentro do metal e fora do metal que fizeram com que ele tivesse a, a, essa paixão por tocar a guitarra. So, David, uh, talk about your first contact with music, also about your first influences in metal, your first influences in music in general, and uh, which bands uh, inspired you to start playing and be what you are today? Okay, that's a good question. I've, I've had that a lot throughout my career. The, I think the first thing that inspired me in music was my father, God rest his soul. My dad was a guitar player. He was a music teacher. You know, he. Uh, we had three boys, my two older brothers, Paul and Ronnie. Ronnie was a singer. My brother, Paul, the middle, he was an army guy. He was like Rambo. And my dad was a great guitar picker, and he played and toured around with Roy Clark and had appeared on the Hee Haw Show way back in the day with Roy Clark a few times. And he first put the guitar in my hand when I was like eight years old. And I played it for about a week and said, this isn't for me. And I wanted to, you know, ride motorcycles, chase girls, even at eight years old. And... I kept watching my dad play, and as I was getting older and listening to bands like Led Zeppelin, Aerosmith, you know, and I was growing up younger, you know, I was about 12 years old, and my dad said to me and my mom, what would you like for Christmas? Would you like a guitar, or would you like a motorcycle? And I thought I wanted to be Evil Knievel, and my mom said, get him the guitar, he'll live longer. And once my dad put that guitar in my hands again at 12 years old, everything changed. I was influenced by a lot of different styles at a young age because I was 12 years old and my father got me started in reading music, understanding music and notes and timing. But after my father is an influence, he also exposed me to classical guitar for Andre Segovia. Christopher Parkening, you know, Chet Atkins, Roy Clark, Merle Travis, all these finger style guys. 
and I was, you know, I was just in awe of them. But as I started turning into 14, 15, 16 years old, I was already realizing I could play guitar. A guy named Howard Anderson, that was a local guy, a good friend of mine, was a really good rock player, you know, saw something in me, and he kind of was giving me some lessons and kind of opened up the door for me when I was like, you know, 12, 13, 14, and we ended up being in a band together. And then, you know, things changed, and I moved on, got older. By the time I was 16, 17, I was already hip to all the Paul Gilbert Jason Becker, Marty Friedman stuff, and different times in my life, I like different guitar players. Like when, like I said, when I was young, you know, Roy Clark, Al Miola was a huge influence on me. I mean, I was into the Van Halen thing, the legendary Eddie, God rest his soul, but I loved Steve Vai when I was hearing him at 16, 17 years old. And when I heard Al Miola for the first time, when Howard turned me on to him, he held up this album called Elegant Gypsy. And this looked like this Italian guy in a suit and a tie with a black Les Paul and some gypsy lady behind him. And I, and I said, who is this bum? What is this guy? He doesn't even look like he shreds. Well, I went and put that record on and I shut my mouth and said, oh, forgive me. And that changed my life in playing and getting into fusion and progressive music when I was brought up in Michael Shanker, Uli John Roth, who's a good friend of mine, Steve Vai, the Van Halens, the Paul Gilberts, Jason Beckers, Friedmans. I was into that stuff. Me, Michelangelo, Badio, we're all friends. You know, we played on each other's records. And I met other guys as we moved along, you know, and these were guys, you know, when I started getting into 18, 19, 20 years old, I already knew what I had and was playing, but I always had respected and looked back at these guys that were like influences on me in my earlier years, you know, and then I started going to college, studying classical guitar before even my Man of War days. And then I started getting into, you know, Alan Holdsworth. Frank and Baldy, you know, a whole different level of guitar playing, you know, in fusion. And I just started to grow and we all, you know, learn from different guys and just kind of, you know, you take bits and pieces from other guys and try and turn it all into your own style. And that's, you know, what I always did. And, you know, I admire all the guys I grew up on and I, and I, I believe I know I have my own style, but I never forget the people that I like that I could say till the day I die, I, I love this guy. He was an influence on me back in my day. I like this guy during that time. We all have them. Anybody that says they don't is full of shit. So there's my answer, <laughs> my long answer to that question. That's okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm writing everything you'll say here. And now I'll be the... <laughs> you know, some of these questions, you know, there's a long answer to it because, yeah, no problem. You, know, no problem. you know, when you climb the top of one mountain in your guitar yeah. skills and you're like, okay, you got there. That's not it. That's the bottom of the next mountain you have to climb. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I you just keep going up and going up to this day. And that's how I've always looked at it. You know, I like who I like, you know, there's guys, you know, I you know are not my favorite players, but, and I got, there's people that love me, like me, people that don't like what I do. You know, I, I, I don't give a shit. It's okay. You know, <laughs> I, I, there's a saying that me and Joey came up with when I was in Man of War that we always used to say. And I say it to this day to anybody watching this and use it for yourself. If you've never seen me and my band, whether it's Man of War those days, DSG, Wings of Destiny, Kings of the New Kingdom, Fionor, you know, and Grave Rain, come on out, see the band. Go check out our videos if you like us. Bring a friend. If you don't like us, don't come again. I don't fucking care. There's a plenty of people that will come see the band. And when I tour overseas, you can't make everybody happy, whatever. So <laughs> there you it. go. Right. So I'll make a short translation here with uh, the most important uh, things you, you said. So, uh, ele disse que começou a tocar com 12 anos de idade. 
ele contou a história da mãe dele, quando ele fez o aniversário de 12 anos, né? ele ficou entre receber de presente uma motocicleta ou uma guitarra. Aí a mãe dele entrou na conversa e disse, não, eu dei uma guitarra de presente porque ele vai viver mais e não vai sofrer nenhum acidente. Então, ele começou a tocar aos 12 anos, o pai deu de presente essa guitarra para ele, e lá no início ele ouvia muito ver algum clássico, né? ouvia Ray Clark, ouvia o Led Zeppelin, que eram as bandas de, de maior influência nessa época de adolescência dele. Depois, aos 16 anos, ele começou a ouvir o Paul Gilbert, Sylvia Bay, Marty Friedman, que foram as primeiras é, influências para tocar na forma shredding, né, que a gente chama, aqueles solos mais rápidos, mais trabalhados. E também ele fez é, muitas amizades né, durante esse início de carreira, né, que foram o Michael Schenker, o Legion Root, lá do, do Scorpions, que foram são lendas até hoje, né? Uh, e Nossa, lá com o Michel Angel de Bate, que hoje é o guitarrista do Menor, né? Titular. Vai, é um grande amigo dele. Ter... E eles trabalham Aldei, juntos. Aldei Miola, né? só tem monstro aí, meu irmão. Sim, sim. Jason Becker. Ver, né? <risos> Jason Becker, grande Jason Becker. Ele, foi, ele, falou, ele falou do Raybon também, né? Ele se sente influenciado sim. pelo Rich Black. E também do, falou do Michel Angel de Bate, né? Que é o atual guitarrista do Menor. Legendário também. E ele disse que eles estão sempre em parceria, um grava coisas para as é, músicas. O, 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 Michael o Michael Angelo sempre foi muito rápido, tudo, 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 sempre foi. É, sempre duas foi casas. Desde, é, sempre foi desde, 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 desde o início. Só deixa eu dar uma boa noite para todo mundo aqui, só um minutinho. Vamos lá. Boa noite, André Luiz, Marcelo Santos, Neto Moraes, The Tenor House of Metal, Shredded, True Brothers of Metal, Phil, com certeza, Simon, Great Brother. Blast from the past, tread it to death. André <risos> Luiz, é, Jailson, hey brothers of metal and doom, machine guns. Aí é o. É o Arthur. Arthur, grande Arthur, greatest from Ireland, metal brothers. <risos> é, aqui, aqui, aqui não tá, aqui não tá no, no, no script, aqui é uma pergunta a minha. Em, okay. 1900, é, em 1992, o Manuel lançou o Trice of Show. Ele substituiu o Rock the Boss, na minha cabeça. Né? O Manuel vinha de uma sequência de discos, né? Os primeiros discos, né? O Hate Wings. Battle Wings. Hate Wings. Goliath. Cycle of the Hammer. O uh -huh. que mais? Esqueci. Fight in the World. Hate. É, e aí o, o David entrou. E a primeira vez que eu ouvi o, o Manuel, o Trash of Steel, os caras é um guitarrista novo. Eu falei, caralho, o cara passou isso em Rosa de Boys, porra, deve ser foda. E a primeira vez que eu ouvi, eu disse, tá completamente diferente. Tava mais pesado, mais cadenciado, em outra linha. Continuando sendo épico, né? Bem épico. Abordando sempre os temas, né? Odin, essas coisas. E ele não se intimidou. Ele chegou lá e largou o verbo e teve a, 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 a felicidade também, e a banda deixou ele criar o que ele criou também. Trash of Steel, Aquiles, a música dele. Entendeu? Como é que ele se sentiu nisso? Isso é uma pergunta minha. Tá bom. So, this is a question uh, outside of the, the ones that, that we have. This is a personal question from Eduardo. And uh, he said that the first time he listened to the, the Trash of Steel, Uh, he was uh, like, oh my god, uh, this new guy will be playing in the place that was from Ross. I don't know what to expect. And when he listened to it, he was, this is heavier than before. And this is, he was like, uh, I don't know what is happening, but I love this. <laughs> this is so good. This is so heavy. And how was this uh, to get to a band like Menor at the first time? And Uh, let your side there to create uh, a song like Achilles that is a I don't know a Saint Grail <laughs> of the Men War songs the for us. The story of the battle with Hector, yes, yeah. Achilles. That, that's a yeah, that, that is perfect. <laughs> a 27 minute song. <laughs> Troy. And, well, uh, who was this uh, to just came to a band like Men War and to make history? How was it? Well, I have been answering that question for over 30-something years. Yeah. <laughs> and to, to try and make that long story short, 
I and I had met Ross when they were touring and doing the club scene in Chicago on Fighting the World. And Ross and I had become friends. Then they were gone for a few years. And at that time, I was playing in the club scene, won a few guitar competitions, and it was in a band called Vengeance at the time. And we were playing the Thirsty Whale Club, which is no longer there, one of the most popular clubs at the time. And a friend of mine was there, a girl named Mary Beth, and she came backstage and said, just so you know, Eric Scott Columbus, God rest his soul, and Joey are here and would love to talk to you from Manowar. And a good friend of mine, Randy Kurtz, who had worked with them, you know, said, yeah, man, these guys have been wanting to talk to you. So I came out from backstage and met them and talked to them, and they're like, hey, how you doing? Really cool guys, shook hands. First time I really met Man of War, hanging out. Hey, we heard all about you, and we're playing, and we came to check you out. You know, we're looking for a new guitar player. And I'm like, oh, wow, hey, that's cool. So no pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no pressure. So I was playing two nights, and I got up there, and we played, and I, you know, did my songs, did my guitar solo everything they came out the second night i was playing eric was standing on the side of the stage you know behind the monitor board watching me giving me the thumbs up and to make a long story short you know joey and i exchanged numbers and they were staying downtown at the canterbury court because they were mixing kings of metal at that time it was pretty much done recorded they were in town mixing ross wasn't and I didn't know at the time until Joey and I started talking a few days after that. He's like, hey, I want you to come down and hang out with me at Universal Studios. So I started going down there, hanging out after work, checking, you know, grooving with him, going to the clubs, introducing him to girls I know, you know, all that crazy fun stuff, man. <laughs> and um, we started to become really good friends. And we were hitting it off at Brothers. And one day I was at my folks' house and he called me up and he said, grab a piece of paper and a pencil and I want you to write this down. I said, okay, it was like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, like on a Sunday. And he goes, that which does not kill you or kill me only makes you stronger. And he goes, welcome brother. You beat out about 300 guitar players you're the new guy, the new king of shred in Man of War, and I'm going to call you the death dealer because you play over the neck like this scale stuff, like you do faster than most people play regularly. And I was like, are you friggin' kidding me? From that <laughs> moment on, it changed my life. I sold my Trans Am. You know, we had a party and had the whole band come out and – um you know, and, and I left and went to New York and started rehearsing with them. And, you know, just to clear the air, you know, I brought up earlier Michelangelo Badio. He and I have been friends for a long time. You know, he invented the, you know, the, the two, two neck thing like yeah. this. But, you know, and he does over the neck stuff too. But I was playing over the neck long before I ever knew him, before we ever met anybody, because my father turned me on to Danny Gatton that's a hot country picker that played guitar, hot country licks with a shower towel over the guitar and was playing over the neck like this. That's the first time I ever saw anybody play over the neck. No disrespect to Michael, but we became friends. A lot of people always put he and I together, but that was never what it was with me and him. I respect him what he's done. He respects me and, uh, I played on his album, Hands Without a Shadow 2, and he played on my uh, uh, Hellborn record with Joe Stump, T.D. Clark, uh, uh, Instrumental Shred Fest, The Voyage, and he played on the Hitman on the Still a Warrior CD, you know, again with T.D., Michelangelo Badio, Joe Stump, Parker Lundgren that was in Queensryche, Roger Staubach, and several other great guitar players. So there was never no competition thing. We were always neck and neck playing, you know, and friends. And, you know, now he's in Man of War now. Good luck. Let's see how that goes, how long you think that'll last. And if you'll get a gold <laughs> or platinum CD out of it, like I crow wrote The Triumph of Steel. And there's a reason why that record is still to this day 
one of the best-selling Man of War records to date that went gold and double platinum. And I'm proud of that, and I'll wear it on my shoulder, and nobody can knock that off. And I've gone on and did many things after that with my DSG bands and many other projects we can talk about. Oh. <laughs> but it was a wonderful joy. You know, I got to tour around the world, saw many wonderful things. You know, Joey's, you know, a smart guy, really intelligent, is taking care of that band and kept him alive when if the band wasn't so big in America. But he doesn't care. He doesn't have to. He's done very well in Europe. And I was very proud to be a part of that band during my time. And Ross and I have been friends since day one. And when he was out of the band, those those reins were handed over to me. But I didn't I didn't fill anybody's shoes, brother. Every band I've always gone to, I bring my own shoes, my own style, my own plan, and I proved it on Triumph of Steel. And some of the best stuff I played was never even on that record because when I left after six years, you go listen to Triumph of Steel. Joey and I wrote great music on it to all the fans. But you go put on Ashes to Ashes, and you go listen to that track, see the video. Go listen to Daydreams. Go listen to Etude, and you really see what Dave Shankel could do and write as a composer after the Triumph of Steel. And every DSG record and every album I've done after that cemented me as a super shredder in the world with all the other great peers out there that I like and admire too. And I stand by that. So there you go. Oh, that's good. That's so nice, man. Thank you. And I oh. love the fans more than anything. I will say this. I don't care what fans you are. Man of War to this day has got the strongest fans in the world. They are the best. They will go. You can take, 20 fans of a band here in America and one of them in Europe will crush those 20 fans. They are <laughs> that strong and true and powerful. And I have loved every fan from my man of war days that have followed me to all my bands. And I thank you and respect you for that, for, um, you know, keeping your eye on me and following me through my career, because you don't get any better than man of war fans. No way. Hands down. Thank you, David. Vamos tentar traduzir. <risos> Bom, ele tentou resumir uma longa história né, da, do início de carreira com o Menor. Então, assim, o Menor estava em turnê, eles estavam tocando, e o David, por acaso, já era amigo do Ross. Então, não foi uma questão de substituição, ele já conhecia o Ross, já eram amigos. E a partir dessa amizade, ele conheceu o Joey. Eles trocaram telefones, né, e uma certa noite começaram a conversar e tal, o Joe assistiu ele tocando, eu acho que a, a banda que ele tocou na época era Vengeance. Am I right, David? Uh, the Vengeance. band that you played? Vengeance. Vengeance. Yeah. Yeah. Vengeance. Vengeance. Yeah. Ele tocou na banda Vengeance na época, e aí ele começou a conversar com o Joe, né, o Joe de Maio, fizeram amizade, trocaram telefone, e um certo dia ele recebeu uma ligação do Joey dizendo que ele tinha sido aprovado e seria o novo guitarrista do Man Wall, é, e eles tinham feito teste com mais de 300 músicos e ele tinha sido escolhido então ele pensou que era uma brincadeira na época né então foi assim a entrada dele na banda e aí ele contou um pouco né do início de carreira é, que quando ele estava na é, nessa ocasião que conheceu o Joey é, eles estavam terminando a mixagem do Kings of é, Kings of Metal então, finalizando o Kings of Metal, que veio, foi o álbum antecessor ao Trials of Seal, e a partir daí, eles começaram os trabalhos com o Trials of Seal, que teve toda essa identidade do David, né? Você pode comparar com todos os anteriores que tiveram o Ross, são bem diferentes do, do Trials of Seal, que é... Foi naquele o é, é o álbum mais diferente, né? Você vê que os que vieram depois também, com o outro ideia, que eu não vou falar o nome por questões polêmicas, uh, então... O David tem toda essa característica dele, né? Então, uh, eu acho que eu resumi bem também, o resumo do resumo. É, essa, essa seria, na verdade, a segunda pergunta. Eu incorporei é, mas tudo, né? Incorporou, Não. mas estava ali, né? É, tá, tá, de, tá de boa. É, agora aqui, vamos, vamos seguir, né? Fala um é pouco isso. do trabalho com o DSG, DSG né? O David Schenkel Group. Pronto. So then, for now, we want you to talk about your, uh, your work with the DSG. Well, after I was getting out of Man of War, and 
just so everybody knows, you know, Joey and I and Eric, we all stayed friends because after I got out of Man of War, I went back to college at COD and studied classical guitar, took my credits from there, transferred them to Roosevelt University, one of the top 10 music schools, colleges in the country at the time. And I graduated there with my bachelor's of music, you know, in jazz, classical guitar, music theory, etc. And it was time for me then to do my own thing after Man of War, have my own record with my own name, because there was other guitar players that were doing it that are friends of mine, like Chris and Pilatera and stuff like that. If they can do it, why can't I? You know, and I could back it. So Joey and I were friends. And when I was putting the first demos together, you know, I was turning. Joey wanted me to turn them on with him because when I was out of the band, we still had a contract with each other that we could work with each other because there was no bad blood when we left. You know, some things we just keep to each other. And he was hearing the music, digging it, and we put Ashes to Ashes together, my debut CD, you know, with Trey Sabar on vocals, Eddie Foltz on drums, Brian Gordon on bass, Shreddy Eddie on keyboards. And Joe loved it. I loved it. Everybody in the band loved it. Our engineer, Jay Walsh, was doing mixing and stuff for us. And Joe came out when we were near the done and all the recording, and we got it all ready, and he took it overseas to um, Germany and had the engineer that does the band Rammstein. They actually ended up mixing and mastering that record for us or mixing it. And we ended up getting John Skypes at the time to master it, who's done a lot of Man of War records and has done all three of my DSGs. And that was my way of coming out going, look, here's what I did with Man of War. Now really check me out. I shedded my skin like a snake and said, let me show you I can compete with some of the best of them out there. And that record put me on the map as a neoclassical shredder where people are like, oh, he could do Ingbe this, Christian Pillar there, that, whatever. I didn't do it for that. I did it to show my fans this is how I really play. I can play anything. And it did well. Joey flew out his video company. Um, to do the video Ashes to Ashes and the song Calling All Heroes after that time was when 9-11 happened. That was awful. And Tracy and I wrote a song about that, that Calling All Heroes, and a few songs on the record about that son of a bitch, Bin Laden, and all the shit he did. So that album did very well for us, and then we moved on and did Hellborn, and I was still with Joey, and that was our Ashes came out through Nuclear Blast, through Joey's label. Then when we did Hellborn, that was still through Joey, but on a different label, but he brought the band over seas to do the 2007 Magic Circle Fest, because just two years before that, we did the Mad War Reunion 2005, where I came back there and crushed everybody and melted their faces. (laughs) It was wonderful to play on stage with all them again, with Ross, Carl, you know, Rhino and Donnie and Scott and all that. That was yeah. the best. I mean, those videos are infamous and will live on forever in the hearts of Man of War fans and all of us. So the second record came out on July 10, 2007. We released it at the Magic Circle Fest, and we have Bleeding Hell and Asylum God, as we used for videos for the band from that. And then, you know, things change. Joey was going through some changes in business. And my manager at the time, who still is, Johnny Pettigrass, that has been with me since day one I stepped in the band. We've looked out for each other. We went to Pure Steel Records and put out this third DSG record, Still a Warrior, which did very well for us. And then I have done all during that time, 29 guest solo CDs, three more coming out this year that I do best solos on, you know, and played on other people's records. They played on mine and, you know, moved on and did, you know, uh, uh, Theodore record, Power of the Chosen One, when I got hooked up with them. Gus was a big Man of War freak, and Ross and I did a guest solo for them on We Are Heavy Metal with Tony Martin, that same with Black Sabbath, a few other people, and you know, Gus had the idea to say, let's come on, bring you over, and let's do like 90% of the songs from Triumph of Steel. I came to Argentina. We did it. It was great. 
He said, would you like to join the band and write an album with us? I did. And, you know, I wrote from the five songs for Triumph, for, I mean, oh, for Power of the Chosen One, which then the eyes are singer and would us. You know, we got it ready to release and COVID hit and we couldn't go to her. So we just put it out and, you know, things change over time. And, um, you know, I ended up bringing a new singer into the band when Sven left, Michael Stark from Starburner, who's also singing for Kings of the New Kingdom with me and Rhino. And I'm doing the second Grave Brain record. Now, back to DSG. I am considering a fourth DSG record. A lot nice. of my fans come to me and go, are you going to do a fourth one? And, you know, I, I'm considering it. But right now, I, I like playing with the people I'm playing with, with me and Tony, Gabriel, and Mickey for Grave Rain. Plus, we got Anton and Andreas in Wings of Destiny, which, if you know who they are, very progressive symphonic band that's like a symphony X meets um rhapsody of fire a little bit of dream theater and i'm sandwiched right in the middle of those guys so we've got six seven songs already coming out with the record and we're like over halfway done with the kings of the new kingdom record with me and rhino writing together his songs my songs that i do all the guitars he's he sings on one we've got Sven diana singing on a track uh, michael stark is our main singer in the band Rhino's got one of his guys singing. We'll be announcing the names. And we'll be putting that record out that the Man of War fans are waiting for. And we're like five songs in for the next Grave Rain. And that band will be playing out this year and probably getting some shows together. Definitely for Wings of Destiny in Costa Rica, Argentina. And what we're going to pull off with our manager for Kings of the Kingdom. It's just right now, get the music done, lyric videos, videos get it out with our people and the labels and then see where we go with it from there. But yes, DSG is my heart and soul. It's my baby. It's what put my name on the map after Man of War. And there is a chance because you got three records, Ashes to Ashes, Hellborn, Still a Warrior. That's an uneven number. I need a fourth one. (laughs) So that's the best I can answer that question for you. Probably will do a fourth DSG record. So nice to know it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Oh, I vamos think, tentar I think that was supposed to be a short answer, but that was the best I could no. do. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a good one. There's just so <laughs> much to say, man. You know. Don't worry, don't worry. So many stories to tell. We have to talk. I want to say one thing. I want, if he's listening and still on here, I want to thank my buddy and new friend over the last year, Phil from Eternal House of Metal that used to be Phil and Maria's House of Metal. He has been a brother besides a fan. He's a friend and a brother. And he, in the last year, has done so much Photoshop work for me for pictures of all of my guitars from Viper, DS6, DS7, Fafnir, the DS8, will be working with the DS629. He put, we spent like three weeks putting together my five minute musical documentary in a video of my life from Manowar and all the bands after Manowar that I'm into currently. He did a tremendous job. I could not have done it without him. And Phil, if you're watching, thank you. I love you, brother, very much that we met and hope you stick by my side, my friend, because you deserve that because he has been a tremendous help to me and introduced me to you guys. So <laughs> this is good for me to hope to a guest solo with you guys Thank and maybe you. come over and jam. So we owe all that to our brother, Phil, our true brother, Phil the Metal. Thank you, my brother, for always being there and helping me out. That's for you, Phil. So I'll translate this first. Then I will translate the... Your answer, okay? Go <laughs> well, right ahead. Aí o nosso irmão Phil, okay. I'll go cook some steaks and then I'll come back and you might be done. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Agradecer aí o nosso irmão Phil Simons, né? O cara que é, vem trabalhando junto com a gente aí também e veio trabalhando junto com ele né? nesses, nesses últimos anos, né? E o cara é sensacional, né? E apresentou a gente, né? <laughs> Fez essa parceria ser possível, né? O The Cross junto com o David, então 
a gente deve muito ao Phil Simons, Phil e Maria, olha eles comentando aí de novo. Um grande abraço para vocês. Bom, agora traduzindo um pouco da, da primeira pergunta sobre o DSG, né? DSG. É, em poucas palavras, o David disse que foi o que trouxe ele de volta para o mapa, né? Então, é, ele tinha acabado de sair do Menor, então, ele começou a trabalhar uma coisa que fosse dele para ele. Então, foi uma coisa que ele compôs é, pela própria vontade mesmo, né? De tocar aquilo que ele gosta de tocar, de provar para todo mundo que ele pode tocar o que ele quiser. Não precisa sempre ficar parado da mesma forma. Ele pode criar o que ele queria. Chamou os músicos que ele achou que seriam os melhores para aquele momento. E ele falou dos lançamentos, né? Do, é, Wings of Destiny, Red Rain. O Ashes of Ashes, que foi o primeiro, né? O Ashes of Ashes. É, o, o King foi o primeiro é o primeiro do DSG. É, é, é o atual. Não, aqui, não, esse no caso são os lançamentos do DSG. Então isso, teve Ashes of Ashes, Ashes to Ashes, perdão, o primeiro. Depois teve o Hellborn e o Sea Warrior. São os três lançamentos. E o segundo, né, que foi o Hellborn, foi lançado pela Magic Circle, que é do, a gravadora do Joey Maia. Né? Então o Joey sempre está tá dando esse apoio, né? um cara bem prestativo. Então Uh, ele disse também que está planejando um quarto álbum para o DSG, né? que ele não gosta muito do número 3, então está tá precisando de um quarto álbum aí para engordar um pouquinho mais essa discografia. É, eu, eu vou, aqui é o seguinte, eu vou, vou ser bem sincero aqui, não é porque o David está aqui. Eu falo assim, porque eu, eu penso muito, muito, é, numa performance ao vivo de uma banda como o Menor, como o próprio Iron, Saxon, essas bandas tradicionais de heavy metal que vende seu show, que é o espetáculo, né? Que você tá ali embaixo vendo. Assim. E o Ross, o Ross tem aquela performance mais dele, né? Mais na dele, até, até nos primeiros vídeos, né? O, o Carl Logan deve, deve ser completamente influenciado pelo David, especialmente ah. ao vivo. A gente percebe isso. Diga ele que assim, eu não sei como é que se deu a saída, também não preciso dizer, não interessa como foi a quebra de contratos aqui, mas eu, eu como fã, conheço esse manual desde 1982, acompanho a carreira do manual, não a Finco, né, mas escuto, botar eu conheço tudo do manual, que eu ainda consigo ver, principalmente depois daquela apresentação do Magic Chico, que estava com todo mundo, com o Scott, com o Pino, o Ross, com o Cal, todo mundo... Ah, eu 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 Sim, é, é ator de reunião. Então, eu achei que ali, ali, o, 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 depois dali, eu achei que o David fosse voltar para o Menor O. Porque estava rolando já aquele problema com o Cão Logo. Eu achei que o Rino, o, o, o David vai voltar. E eu, eu acho, na minha opinião, como fã, como músico, que eu consigo ver o Menor O ainda com o David. Isso é, é a minha, é minha opinião. E seria muito bom para os fãs também. Não, claro, com certeza. Seria muito bom para os fãs, sem problema nenhum. Isso é o que eu penso. Transmita para ele aí. Vamos lá. Ok. So, uh, Eduardo said... It sounded like you got all that in there, brother. <laughs> And that was, the, that was the short version. <laughs> so, Eduardo has another question. Uh, So when he watched the that reunion tour, the DVD, with you, with Rino, with Carl, everyone who played on that show, and he thought that you were going to come back to the band. <laughs> what, he, what he was like, man, I think David will come back to my life. Oh. Uh, I think Rino and David will, will come back. And he said, Uh, that would be the best formation. <laughs> And he asked uh, if there is any possibility of this to happen again. <laughs> I would have to say no. Oh, you know, there's been many opportunities. <laughs> you know, when we had the Man of War reunion, you know, and Carl was in the band and Ross and all of us went. You know, it was a good thing that we did that because, you know, like Ross had said to me at the time, you know, the unfortunate act, terrible thing that happened to Dimebag being shot and killed. Yeah. You know, Joey and Ross had talked and, 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 and words had went around. You know, we should do a reunion with all the brothers that have been in Manowar 
you know, everybody's getting older, life goes on, and God forbid something happens. This would be something that would be tremendous to the fans, and it was, you know. But when when that thing happened with Carl and he was, you know, kicked out of the band, a lot of people, and again, have their opinions. People are entitled to them. Some people are right. Some are wrong. Who cares? I look at it like Joey had many opportunities to ask me to come back. So a lot of fans wanted that for me and Rhino to come back. A lot of fans wanted Ross to come back and Donnie. But Joey has moved on, and then he figured, well, why not get somebody that was in a Man of War tribute band, whatever, to play these songs better than a fan that's in a Man of War tribute band with the drummer and the guitar. The drummer came in, then Carl was out, and I heard the drummer said, well, why don't we get our guitar player, E.V.? He knows the songs, and he came in. But, you know, I've never met E.V., and he's playing in Fionor now. Okay, cool, whatever, that's all right. But he never was in the band long and never did an album with him, unfortunately. That's too bad because, you know, he did some touring, and when I guess he played on the song Immortal, the original release. Well, once he was ousted, they brought my buddy Badio in. They completely deleted all his guitar tracks and re-recorded it with him and the solo. So he never, to this date that I know of, unless I'm wrong, is on any actual studio record of the Man of War thing. So it, yeah. you know, it is what it is. And Joey just moved on, move on and do his things. And he doesn't really do the festivals where he brings other bands along with like what we did that in 2005 and seven, he had Holy hell. His girlfriend at the time was the singer. You know, some friends of mine were in that band. Rhino was playing drums, Joe Stump, Tom Hess. It did things didn't go so well. It ended whatever, but Joe doesn't do that anymore. You know, they do what they do and it is what it is. I can't speak for him, but you know, if he called me and said, Dave, would you love to come out and do a sit in on a couple of shows with us and play with the band, you, Michael, all of us? I certainly wouldn't say no. I'd say, hey, that'd be wonderful. It'd be great. There's no band on my end. But, you know, I, I don't see that happening. But if it did and it was all in, in goodness and from the heart of true spirit, I would. I just don't see that happening. There's been talk. Would they ever do another Man of War reunion? Well, they just did one of those of several months ago, and it wasn't a Man of War reunion. They just did another one of those festivals and had Viking people and a couple of other bands play, and that was it. If Joey wanted to do it, he would. I don't think he wants to. So I'm not speaking for him. If he did, I'd be happy to. He, he knows how to get a hold of me, and I know how to get a hold of him. Let's leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, David. Let yes. me try to less later thing. <laughs> oh, you've been doing great. I'm with you, brother. Oh, I, think, you. I, I think I need to go flip the stakes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Vamos nessa. Bom, uh, ele disse que realmente essa questão da reunião foi uma coisa muito épica, principalmente para os fãs mas que atualmente ele não se vê tocando novamente com o Menor, até porque teve essa oportunidade quando aconteceu toda aquela questão do Carl, né? e, enfim, não vamos falar sobre isso. E o, o Menor decidiu chamar o baterista da banda, acho que é Kings of, Kings of Steel, alguma coisa assim, que é uma banda tributo aqui do Brasil. Então foi o baterista Sim. brasileiro e foi o Evandro, né? que, é, que é o Evan Martel, Evandro Martel, Ficaram os dois brasileiros tocando com o Menor durante um tempo. E acabou que o David não foi nessa oportunidade. Depois o, o, saiu o Evandro, saiu o baterista da, da banda Tributo. E, novamente, muitos fãs insistindo para o David voltar, perguntando se ele iria voltar. E acabou que o, o Angelo foi chamado, né? O Michael Angelo. E ele está aí atualmente com o Menor tocando. Tá? Mas que o David não recusaria uma nova reunião, né? Se chamasse para ele seria tudo legal, mas que eu, não eu, 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 eu fazer isso, né? É, eu, eu sinto eu, essa atmosfera. Tem essa... Sim. Eu, eu, eu disse que o, o Joey tem essa, essa, essa questão de ah, a gente tem que seguir em frente, 
porque o poder do metal aí se acabou. <risos> então, não, ele... assim, eu, eu, não, mas você sabe que o Bruce Dick saiu do ar e voltou. O Rob Halford é, saiu do Júpiter e voltou. Né? O Kerry King falou que ia parar, parar, acabou, voltou. Outro então, homem. eu acho que o, 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 o business e, e, as, e, as, e as oportunidades né, e pode acontecer e quem ganha com isso são os fãs. São os fãs. Isso foi, foi isso que me deu um estalo na cabeça. Mas assim, seria maravilhoso para a gente, né, daqui a um mês, dois meses, um ano, assim, ah, pô, vou fazer uma live que eu voltei para o menor. É, porra, é, caralho, puta que pariu. <risos> seria bom demais. Ó, diga ele assim, pergunta ele aqui, fala, fala um pouco sobre o molho picante, Hellfire, incluindo, <risos> exclu, e, e também a, 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 que agora ele, 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 ele faz a, o endócia, né, da Viper. Sim, sim, agora a gente vai, um papo mais longo aí de duas horas, vamos nessa. Não problema não, já dura. <risos> you know, let so, me add, Daniel, let me add, you okay. know, when I was brought into Man of War, I toured in, in, in almost every country three times with that band and seen a lot of wonderful things, met a lot of wonderful people and got to talk about my playing, my training, education. And, you know, I played with many great bands when we toured and got to show people my style of playing. And luckily, I'm alive and keep going and continue to show people what I'm doing after Man of War reunions and all my other records I've done a show in my style. And so thankful to have the Man of War fans stay with me on every journey I've been on. That really is what keeps that driving force going. And I love you for that. Eu, eu acho, you, eu acho que... Eu you acho que, <laughs> eu, eu acho que, que ainda tem lenha para queimar o David oh, no Man of War. Você, você sente ainda que ainda não completou esse ciclo, na minha yeah. opinião. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> He said, I think there's uh, so much fire to burn about David and Manoir. Let's wait. <laughs> you know, I love the band. I love the guys. They gave me a wonderful opportunity. And I grabbed it with both hands because sometimes opportunity comes along and you got to grab it. And sometimes opportunity doesn't. And You know, you, you got to take chances to move ahead. Believe in what you're doing. I never let anybody tell me I can't do this, do that. If they don't like it, that's fine. Get the fuck out of my face then. Go do your <laughs> thing your way. I do mine. I don't give a shit. Where's your records? I've got 57 records out there. I'm on over 30, I'll be 34 guest CDs, three DST records, Man of War records officials, over 400 videos, not all to mention all the bootleg stuff I'm on with Man of War. You know, not bragging, but where's all your records? So go do your thing and prove yourself. It is what it is. It's a tough business out there, and you can never, never give up. Believe in what you do, whether it's big or small. Don't worry about the what the guy's doing down the street or this band's doing or they're a little farther along than you. None of that matters. You have to focus on you, the people you love to play with, the band you're in, and be together as a well-oiled machine because if you're not, somebody's got to go and be replaced and keep moving forward. You know, I, I saw a guy say this on, on – Instagram that made a lot of sense. People come into your life, some of them, for only a season. They're not meant to be with you forever. Doesn't mean they're bad people. They're just there for a season and then they go because they're not going where I'm going or you're going. Like for an example, look at the boosters that are on a big rocket spaceship. They count down and that booster rocket shoots that spaceship the shuttle up into outer space. And right before it gets there, what does it do? The booster rockets break off because they're done and they've done their job because there ain't where or meant to go where that rocket's going. It don't mean they're bad people or they're not good people. It's just they ain't going where I'm going and it is what it is. That's why some people come in for a season, some stay longer, and booster rockets only go so far to put that ship in space. And you got to look at things like that. No hard feelings to people. Things change, always do. Sometimes change is good, sometimes change is not good. You just got to roll with it. Amen. <laughs> nice. Now that's a good one to tell them. 
Yeah. Bom, ele deu uma mensagem motivacional massa aí pra gente agora, né? Eu, não, eu, eu entendi perfeitamente. O que eu, o que eu não tô entendendo é que o público tá todo, acho que tá com receio. I'm gonna go make the salad de... now. The steaks are done. Why are you telling me? <risos> Pô, bati tá até bem? no fone aqui. Eu bati até no fone aqui. <risos> the message was too heavy that Eduardo let his cell phone to... <risos> He's gonna go cook too, right? <risos> Bom, eu vou resumir a mensagem motivacional dele, né? Que é sobre essa questão da, dele ter feito tantas coisas, né? Ter feito tantas gravações, trabalhar com tantas bandas, tanto com Menor, tanto é, provado tudo que ele pode fazer com o DSG. Então, ele falou um pouco sobre essa questão da aceitação de críticas também, que Porra, uma pessoa vai, fala mal do trabalho dele, ele pergunta, tá bom, cadê suas gravações, cadê seus discos? Eu tenho aqui minha carreira, tenho tudo consolidado, tenho tudo que eu fiz, mas por que você não faz o seu? Então, é uma coisa que a gente também leva no nosso trabalho aqui, essa questão de crítica no mundo da música é uma coisa muito tenebrosa, muito tóxica, né? Tem gente que tá aqui só... A gente, a, gente aprendeu, a gente aprendeu, a gente aprendeu, e todo dia a gente aprende, e a gente aprendeu com o Paulo, a gente aprendeu com o Paulo, nosso guitarrista, que está aqui. Claro. Que ele, falou uma, ele falou uma coisa que vale para todo mundo, que vale para a gente aqui, até poder, você transfere isso para ele. O Paulo Sim. falou que, que, que uma, uma opinião, uma crítica de uma pessoa medíocre só tem peso e tem ressonância para outras pessoas medíocres. Não, não tem, não, não, não tem relevância para a gente que foi focada na música, a gente vê Sim. a música, a gente respeita a música. Então, essas pessoas passam e a música fica. É isso. Então, so, uh... Eduardo was talking about uh, something that Paulo, our other guitarist from the cross, said uh, some days ago that uh, bad words from bad people only uh, will uh, get to other bad people. It can, uh, cannot have any influences of good people. It only will have influences to bad people. So that's it. That, that was what you were talking about too. Right, right. You know, there's always going to be inner conflicts in bands. But, you know, if you're true brothers and you all love each other and get along, there's nothing you can't work out. I've always been, if there's a problem, what is the problem? And let's work on fixing it right away so we can continue to move on with what we're doing. In most cases, that always works out like that. In some cases, it doesn't. You know, like with my DSG bands, every album i've had completely different band members behind me just because you know this next music was different than some of the members or some members couldn't be involved anymore was never anything bad it was all three records are in the same world but they're all still very different that shows a different side of my playing in slight variations like In Ashes to Ashes was all six string guitar. You know, we tuned a full step down, some drop C stuff, more keyboard stuff that was kind of more, people said, Yngwie-ish, Deep Purple, Rainbow-ish. And then when Hellborn came out, that was all seven string, still tuned down a full step, was a little heavier orchestral stuff, you know, different vocal style. And then Still a Warrior was a friend of mine I brought in to sing and Gabriel Anthony on drums that is is in we that is in my uh brave rain band now with me and tony you know was a different flavor but they're all from the same refrigerator dsg they all just have a little bit of different sound to them and the fourth one you know we'll see how that turns out you know when i start to do it it could be a combination of all three or something slightly different you know if i live long enough to do that record <laughs> I've always, always wanted to do an instrumental record, but I've always had three or four bands I'm in or, or, or touring or this and that. So one of these days I, I'm planning on, if I can, to do my instrumental record called, you know, Unleash the Dragon. I have the artwork for it already. I just have to write the album, you know, and I have all this music to show from classical side of playing, classical guitar, hot country picking, some jazz, Of course, the neo shredding and bluesy rock stuff, you know, just to do it for me and my dad and my mom and to show my fans, I can do this without one singer on any of the tracks just to do it because I've always wanted to. 
So hopefully one day I'll do that. But, you know, I get a lot of fans ask me about an instrumental record and another DSG record and what's happening with all the bands. You know, I, I'm one person. I can only do so much at once. But those things are on my shoulder to consider to do, yes. If that's the best oh, yes. answer I can give you. And I will do them with my new Viper signature guitars. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Dot Viper we'll guitar talk about it. Dot com. Yes. So, uh, you talked about Viper. So, let's take this uh, and talk about the Viper and your uh, hot sauce, the Hellfire, right? <laughs> so, we want to know about it. Talk about the Viper, talk about the, the hot sauce. That's it. <laughs> Here is, oh, camera's backwards. Can you see it? Hold oh, on, let me go this way. Was, yeah, go. O cara faz pimenta, então. There you go. So you got it. Aqui no Brasil, aqui no Brasil, a gente consome muito pimenta, que é bom para o coração. There we go. There's <laughs> that one. Full strike. This is the milder sauce. This one here. And the shred demon. <laughs> that is the way, way hotter one. Thanks to my people at Hellfire Hot Sauce. Shred demon. I met them. I was playing a festival when I was in a band with Tony, my singer in, in Grave Rain a band called Veilside. We were doing a festival with Sebastian Bach, Queensryche, Dokken, uh, Vixen, a few other bands. And I was on stage playing and way off in the corner, there was like about 6,000 people or so at this outdoor place in the middle of nowhere. Beautiful hot day. And I saw this giant red truck that looked like it had this evil, like demon mural on it. When we got done playing, I walked over there And it was a Hellfire hot sauce truck. And I'm like, oh, wow, well, I like hot sauce. Let's go check this out. And Diana and, uh, you know, um, Jake, Jack, actually, he goes by several names. We started talking and chatting things out. And uh, he was like, you know, I want to get into doing some signature sauce. Well, I really didn't know a lot about hot sauce then. So I started talking to them, getting educated. And he was like, you know, maybe we could do this. So some time went by and I was like, ah, I don't know. And my manager, Johnny Pettigrass said, look, let's reach out to these guys. It'll be good for you to do it. You like hot sauce. So I reached out to them. We got together. We picked the pictures and we did some prototypes and came up with, you know, the full shred, which is the milder, you know, beautiful uh, dried tomatoes, sweet spicy, you know, mild jalapeno peppers, ghost peppers, but a lot of flavor in this because for me, hot sauce, and I know there's a lot of people that can eat way hotter than me. If I put it in my mouth and it's like, you know, magma lava so hot as the sun, I can't enjoy the food and then I can't eat it. So this is the milder one that does well. So then we did some prototypes and came up with this one that's like, 10 times hotter than that. And it's not their hottest one, but it's close to it. And that is Shred Demon. And you can get these through hellfirehotsauce.com. He does have some distributors that he's been working with in Argentina, I think. But he will ship, you know, out, out of the country. And also any of my CDs from DSG, to Grave Rain, I have some Fionor CDs, and all the stuff we did with Veilside and our t-shirts and everything, you can get from our website store from Grave Rain, graverainband.com. That's our website, and we have a store that people can go and order any of the CDs, hot sauce, t-shirts, that kind of stuff. But the big stuff overseas, you know, people go directly to Hellfire Hot Sauce, and um, a little surprise, I've been talking to them. We're working on maybe a third bottle to come out later this year. They're the best people in the world. They have the coolest swag, the coolest design. I love them. Every time we get together, I take them out to dinner. They've got new barbecue sauce out. I got to try. I heard it's fantastic. And I'm glad to be with people that you get along with and they respect you. You respect them. And you have a great relationship, and we've been doing this for over eight years now. That's so nice, man. Great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's translate the history of the pepper. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, who knew That's I would ever do hot sauce, but I love it and uh, it works. You know, it works. And That's it's so nice. That's so nice. Also, I like the, the art of the... <laughs> Oh, the, the, the logo stuff, you know. I mean, it's yeah, really your cool. picture, the... <laughs> man, that's nice. <laughs> so you can see, it. it's a little what hard is. to what's on a visual opposite what? direction, yeah. But it's cool, what? you know. And then there's you know, Viper, my buddy it's Jeff Eichmann, CEO of the company. We um, oh. <laughs> did you want to did you want to tell them first about the hot sauce and then we'll go into the yeah, yeah. Thing? I'll okay, translate the, they serve about this I'll, I'll go eat hey back. Daniel I'll go eat the steak and the salad then when I come back <laughs> you'll be ready for me right the steak <laughs> wait this steak uh, we have to grab the hot sauce yes we will when I come I will bring <laughs> hot sauce so we will yeah. come <laughs> Ele falou um pouquinho da marca de pimenta dele. Né? And when I do come over, we got to bring Phil. It will it, yeah. it won't be complete if I don't have my buddy Phil with me. We got to bring him. You yeah. know, we got to get him over. <laughs> if I got to drag him there, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Bom, ele, a gente falou um pouquinho dessa marca de pimenta dele, né? O Shred Demon. <laughs> Momento do marketing da live. O cara além de guitarrista, de... de ter tocado no menor, o cara também faz pimenta, então, e o nome também é bem subjetivo, né, Shred Demon, <risos> tem que falar para ele que a gente tem que trazer as dessas para o Brasil para ver se é bom, eu vou jogar no feijão, no acarajé. Ó, <risos> oh, Fábio, Fábio, é o seguinte, a gente vai ter que fazer outra live, não dá, não é muita coisa. É, tem que <risos> falar da Viper, né, tem que falar da é, Viper aí, vai falar da Viper, pra gente, né? é, vai falar da Viper, e o que que ele espera, né, e desse, tá, tá junto do, com, com a gente no álbum de do metal, né? É <risos> e a gente acha não, e ele. Doom sauce! Doom sauce! Doom sauce! Doom sauce! When you eat this Doom sauce, you get. <risos> yeah, they have some, I believe, called Doom, and it will put you in Doom mode. <risos> So, uh, we now want to talk about the Viper. Please introduce us to the Viper Guitars. Viper Guitars out of California. If everybody could see Jeff Heitman, if you're watching. We have been working on these guitars now. I think we've been together probably a little over three and a half years. And, you know, he had reached out to me some time ago. And, and I had been responding. He and I have been corresponding on guitars. And I, I had seen his stuff at NAMM and online. And some of my friends like Ronnie North and uh, a few a few other people, you know, were Jimmy Bell, great guitar player, you know, was, uh, you, you know, using some Viper guitars. He had a signature made. So Jeff and I, you know, were communicating online and we got on the phone and talked. And I said, send me out this guitar, this one and that one. Let me check them out. And I said, you know, if we do this, I've been with many other companies that have built me signature guitars. I just don't go buy a guitar and play a guitar. My stuff is built from the ground up for me. And I told Jeff, you have never, <laughs> and he, if he's watching, he knows this, you have never built a shred machine till you built mine, brother. <laughs> and I saw some of his guitars, his bodies, and I said, let's design this from the ground up. And we came up with two different headstocks. I took the pointy arrow one for the DS6 because that was my design when I was with other companies. And I had a 29 fret flying V made back when I was with ESP a long time ago. And I used um, that he, when we wanted to do the seven string, he, he came up with a couple of different designs for the headstock. And then I picked the one I like. And then when we were looking at some of the body, he said, I said, I like a super cutaway. So, you know, whether it's bolt on or not, I cannot have the big brick at the heel. So he came up with a nice ski uh, slope kind of joint where as you slide up on the neck, it just molds right into the body and do that deep cutaway. So when you're playing the six string or seven string or eight string, this part of your hand, there's so much cutaway and it's all mahogany, ebony fretboard, um locking tuning keys uh, strictly emg pickups 
locking guitar track, Kaler Tremolo custom made, and my David Shankle shred custom vibrato bars. But I do use a Floyd Rose clampy nut because I really like them, but my Tremolo is Kaler with special springs in it for how I like it to use. And we did the body design, which was mostly mine, based off of something he had, and I kind of really shaped it. And then, you know, we went from your standard 12 radius to a 14, so you could get it the neck a little flatter with the frets that I like that are custom made. Last four frets are scalloped. On the 29 fret guitars, the last nine frets are scalloped because I like that pocket when you slide up to really grab. I've had those guitars like that since I was in Vengeance, the last four fret scallop. And we put some prototypes together, the first two, and then we made some adjustments. And then we had the DS6 with the see-through uh, quilted black top. Then we did the custom Fafnir, the Dragon, the DS7, because the first Grave Raid record, we um, did a song called On the Wings of Fafnir, which is just a story tell of a blue dragon that spits blue mist at you, not flame. And if it touches you, you'll turn into a dragon. And the only way you can kill it, keep it dormant, is by a sword in its heart. But the sword has to stay in. And I'm like, this is a good story. We'll do that. And then Tony and I started going and looking for pictures. And I found the one online. And I bought the rights to it so I could own it, put it on T-shirts, underwears, panties. I don't care. And I had it put on my seven string by the wonderful artwork of Bo Pittman out of Alabama that does race cars, motorcycles. And uh, we're working on getting another dragon made. And um, so we did that. Then we did the eight string guitar, which is like a, um, a battleship kind of gray with some metal flake mm -hmm. in it. And uh, so it's pretty cool. And on the eight string that's different than most guys is I uh, in Grave Rain and DSG, and I said this to Daniel earlier, I tune yeah. a full step down. So I don't need an eight string guitar that's got a lower, like if it was an F sharp and tune that all the way down, I'll be in mud level. You know, I don't need that. So I tune my eight string guitar. So what that low you think is a low eight string is really the seven string. And when you get up to the high E string, my next high string is the high A. So I can get all the way up higher in that violin range for shredding and still go all the way down low in the cello range. So that's how I string my eight string. And we'll eventually get another one of that. But the new monster that's out is the DS629 fret. I had showed up Daniel earlier. It's a three yeah. octave guitar, A, 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 super cutaway, all all pearl black with metal flake in it. Jeff did a tremendous job on showing how much of a master he is at building and getting the paint job and the neck and the feel in. And also on the first couple of prototypes as we did the first three guitars, my buddy RD, Robert Daniels from Third Coast and Chris Evie that owns it have been with me 30 years. And every guitar company I've been with from ESP, Dean, Court guitars, uh, Grossman guitars, all these master builders. It goes to RD, and he finds everything that's wrong with it, and his hands are the last one that touches them that turns them into the shred machine. And we were giving Jeff tips on stuff, on how to get a little deeper under the hood, and Jeff got it. He nailed it, and, you know, you know, we'll see where we go. I may do a 29 fret seven string. I've sold quite a few of my guitars and hopefully we'll sell more. But, you know, if people buy them, guys, great. If they don't, they're built for me, you know. Seven string, you know, signature guitars don't always sell to a lot of people. I mean, I know Steve Vai sells a lot, John Perducci, Eddie Van Halen. You know, those guys have sold a lot of the guitars and other people sell some. But, you know, to have a signature guitar with a, a professional quality company, what's important is the relationship, how well I get along with Jeff. That's why you see other guys, oh, they're with this amp company, then that upkeep. I've been with Fractal Audio for 15 years. I would never plug into anything else. I'm an Ernie Ball guitar string before I was even in Manowar. Kaler Tremolo, when I was in Manowar, from Floyd Rose to Kaler's, because I like them, nothing wrong with Floyd. And, you know, 
that's the stuff I, I, I like and what works for me and, um, you know, what works for other people is great. It's all how you play, what you like. And when you can get a company that can build you your guitar, you get everything as close to exactly what you want from the ground up. And that's how I roll. And I, I'm comfortable at home with Viper. And it's not always so much. If I like gear and I'm not endorsing them, I'm happy to buy it. But, you know, when you're endorsing a company, it's not always just, you know, what the company can do for you, what you can do for the company and the relationship you have with your artist people and the owner of the companies that have a lot to do with keeping you there. And professional and Jeff and I, we just clicked right off the bat and we're doing a great job. And, and, and I'm happy to be with him and me be there and, you know, some of the other wonderful artists that they have. We will continue to build more Dave Shankel guitars. Hail and shred. So nice. <laughs> Viper. <laughs> right? Muita, muita história para contar. Como Viper. Diz no shred. With the sauce. Viper. <laughs> shred <laughs> sauce. <laughs> a gente vai ter que fazer outra live com ele quando a gente começar a gravar com ele. Right. Eu vou fazer é, com é, o Não, fala. Traduz aí. Pode fazer com ele? Eu vou ver, pronto, vou trazer primeiro, ele falou um pouco da, da Viper Guitars, né? É, sobre esse patrocínio que ele tem, já tem alguns anos, e falou também da guitarra signature dele, né? Que é uma guitarra de 29 casas, né? É uma, uma coisa absurda. Ele já falou que para tocar duas, ele já falou que para tocar duas, eu vi aqui, a guitarra de oito cordas é maravilha, viu? Pode pensar nisso aí. É, ele, ele tem de sete, de oito, tem, tem a guitarra com 29 casas, que é um negócio absurdo que ele mostrou mais cedo. Estou quase pedindo um monte de presente. É. <risos> Mas, enfim, ele falou sobre essa questão da parceria, né? Com a, essas you, empresas. Que wanna, mais, if, uma... Daniel, se as pessoas querem ver essas guitarras, You can go on my Facebook page and I have an album yeah. for each one of the guitars and on the Viper guitar site, you know, www.viperguitar.com. Two of them are up there. The other two will go up and on Jeff Heitman's page, which is connected to Viper. I'm posting pictures on the stuff all the time. The wonderful pictures that Phil did and Photoshopped and helped create my new DS Diamond logo. You know, that was Phil's, mine and Phil's idea. So I'm always putting them out there because, you know, promotion is, is everything too, you know. So, and I'm proud to show those guitars and they play phenomenally and they're built for speed for me, man. That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, uh, bom, se vocês quiserem também ver essas guitarras que ele falou, tem tudo na página dele do Facebook, né? Ou no site da Viper, né? ViperGuitar.com. Então, você pode pesquisar e dar uma olhada, quem se interessou. Eu vou, eu essas, que eu vou colocar, eu vou essas colocar monstruosidades o... que ele criou. Eu vou colocar o link da Viper na live aqui também, na descrição. Eu so, coloquei todos we'll, os links dele, mas vou colocar o We have the, in the Isso. description of the live, uh, after we, we take it to YouTube, we put the, your links of your profile, the links for Viper, everything. Ah, é, é, to, é, de, todos to os links dele eu já coloquei. Vou colocar o da Viper. Okay, tá bom. Well, Daniel, well, what I will do, Daniel, when we when you need it, I will send you. I have a whole brand new bio that was done between me, oh, my nice. sister, and my manager, and it's got all the links to all my social medias, and I yeah, can send that better. to like your email, so it will all be okay. hyperlink. If you get me your email to me, and then I can send that okay, to you. I'll so when you. you when you go post it in the video, the links will be there. But I did want to mention. To people you know that that came on and stayed on one thing we left out my i run a music school shankles music okay and i have been teaching professionally for 35 years in person and online all over the world and i don't care if you're a beginner intermediate advanced if you do not have to just be a rock guy to approach me or a shredder You want to learn country music, Merle Haggard, you were a complete beginner and need to know exercises, pentatonic scales, modes, the understanding of chords and developing leads in music theory. Reach out to me on my inbox on social media. Send me a message. You can email me at Dave 
underscore Shankel at yahoo.com if you're interested in online lessons over Skypes. This is what I do for a living. I've been doing it for 35 years, and it works well for me, and I love to teach and help people on their journey to begin, you know, to begin guitar. So, you know, that's what I do if anybody's interested out there and keep an eye out on what's going on because I'm going to be playing out this year with Grave Rain, Kings of the New Kingdom. We're gearing up with Wings of Destiny that's in Costa Rica. You know, I got my fly rig together with the Fractal Audio FM9. I'm an X Effects 3 guy. It's just play, 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 man, and just love what you do, you know, and I appreciate you guys having me on here. And if you're going to have me do a guest solo with you guys, I'm happy to do it and hope maybe one day I can come over this year, next year, and jam with you guys, man, and, and see some of my Brazilian fans, you know? <laughs> so right? I'll just translate this le this last one about your your class, and we came back to talk about it, okay? okay go for it. <laughs> go for it. Let's go. Bom, ele falou também que a questão das aulas de música, ele é professor de música há mais de 35 anos, né? Então, caso alguém tenha interesse de fazer aula de, de guitarra com o David Schenkel, só manda mensagem para ele, conversar direitinho, e você pode ter um interesse também no como seu professor. Então, ah, isso, <risos> tá aí o marketing, tá aí o marketing, né? Agora vamos para a nossa última pergunta, né? A finalizar ah, essa é, para finalizar, você precisa falar para ele que, assim, que as lives é, sempre tem uma hora, já tem uma hora e quinze para não se estender. Sim, sim. É, eu vou fazer uma pergunta e você já convida ele para ah, outra nossa. live, porque é, é muita coisa. É muita coisa. Nós somos em fevereiro, eu cheguei ali que é junho, após a gente gravar o tributo do Saturno, a gente chama ele. Ou se ele tiver alguma, já lançando já alguma coisa, fala com a gente que a gente vai e, e fala, faz a live. É, agradecer demais, é um livro aí, é um livro de 800 páginas, acho que primeira edição é só 800 páginas, tem muito mais aí, é, é, é um gentleman, é, tem a escola mesmo do Joy, né? sabe, sabe, sabe vender mesmo, até o cara que não curte metal, passa a curtir metal, só em ouvir conversar com o David, não tem jeito, não tem jeito, o cara fica tão emocionado, fica tão aficionado, que não, eu tenho que ouvir heavy metal. É, ele, ele tem, tem, esse, é, tem esse poder porque é a menor instituição, né? Tem esse poder. Agradecer demais a ele aqui a presença. É como sempre, é, é uma aula, né? A gente é muito privilegiado de ter um cara desse aí, né? Para conversar com a gente, para deixar mensagens, né? Para as pessoas crescerem como músico, como pessoas. E diga ele que a gente está honrado demais em ter ele né? com a gente no novo disco do Ecrois e que dessa vez ele não vai ser tocar rápido, não, ele vai tocar lento. <laughs> Beleza, we'll pass that message for him. So, uh, we want to thank you a lot for this opportunity to be here with us. And also, we want to talk about your expectations with our new work, our new album with The Cross. And also, Edward make a joke that we we'll have to play a little, I don't know, slow, because it's doom. Okay. And he asked if you were sad with it. <laughs> I, I, I can do that to, to play Doom. I, I love the music. I think you guys are tremendous. I think everybody in the band is top notch. You guys write kick ass stuff. I, I've never been in a Doom band, but I, I like the music from bands that do it well. I won't mention other names, but I love what you guys do. And I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Or I would I get asked to, to, to play guest solos or be in other bands all the time around the world, but I don't do it because it's not about necessarily money. It's about I gotta really like the music and, and, and what are is going on and that and it doesn't mean everybody's bad, but I gotta I gotta sit back and look, look at it and go, will I really fit into this? Will this work for me? And when Phil turned me on to you guys, I was like, wow. I, these guys are really tremendous. I like what's going on. And then, you know, checking out the social media. And I'm like, this will be perfect. This will be perfect. These guys tune down death tuning. I love it. <laughs> and, you know, I can play anything. So, you know, like when I get the track from you guys, I just, I already know your tuning, where you want me to start, where you want me to end. I soak the music in and I listen to what is the rhythm telling me to play? What is the song about? 
what is the song saying for the type of solo I need to put there so I can bring the best that I can for my little part that I'm being asked to do. And like I said, I've done 29 of them and I'm on to 34 of them now and more that'll be out this year. I do it all the time and I love to do it in every different tuning you can imagine. <laughs> so I, I'm happy That's to get involved with you guys. I think you're a great band and a great bunch of guys too. Thank you, man. Thank you a lot for it. You better do it because my birthday's coming up March 7th. March 7th, yeah. <laughs> my good buddy, Paulie Z, that had a band called Z Rock, Z O2. They had a TV show years ago called Z Rock out of uh, New York. Anybody that was anybody from D. Snyder and famous comedians were on that show. And they were Man of War fans and their brother, David Z, who sadly is no longer with us. Every year they do a foundation to raise for the David Z Foundation for music to give schools that don't have enough money to buy equipment for children to learn. And he goes all over the world and he's a Skype teacher. Well, he reached out to me last week and it's his birthday on the 11th of March. Mine's the 7th. So my sister and I are flying out there at a club 89 North in Long Island. And we're going to, I'm going to play and several other artists are coming. I can't mention their name, you know, but I'm going to do my instrumental piece etude with backing tracks at war fucking volume. And then his band's going to come out and we're going to do ride the dragon and hail and kill. Cause he's a man of war freak. And we're going to do the versions from the record. The whole thing will be videoed and I'm excited to do it for his birthday and mine and, and have a great time. It's going to be open to the public. And, um, and, and and it's all all proceeds go for the foundation for David Z, Paulie Z Music Foundation. And I'm happy to be a part of it, you know. That's so, so nice I just man. wanted to put that nice. plug in because it's, you know, for so many good things. Paulie, if you're watching, <laughs> that was for you, buddy, and David. God rest your soul, Dave. We love you, man. Well, he falou também sobre essa questão da, de estar com a gente, né? Participando desse álbum. Ele disse que desde o primeiro contato com o, a, o The Cross, né, que o, o filme apresentou a banda para ele, ele falou, porra, esses caras são... Uh, eles tocam na afinação mais abaixo, os vídeos são impactantes, então isso vai ser perfeito, eu quero tocar com eles, quero ter essa oportunidade. E ele agradeceu esse convite também, nosso. E falou também da, que o aniversário dele vai ser no dia 7 de março, né, daqui a duas semanas, três semanas e que eles vão fazer um evento aberto ao público, é, que vai ter uma, uma campanha para a criação de fundos de uma organização que ajuda crianças a estudarem música, né? que não tem dinheiro para comprar equipamento, então todos esses fundos vão ser revertidos para essa organização. Então, Manda ele mandar os vídeos para a gente divulgar aqui, viu? Pronto, vou pedir ele. E eu acho que é isso, né? Agradecer a presença de todo mundo que está aqui. Diga a ele que, que, que muito obrigado novamente, que eu me sinto... Ah, eu não fiz o convite, eu vou fazer, antes eu vou fazer ah, o convite. Faz aí, faz aí, faz aí. Uh, so, David, the, the last thing I want to uh, tell you, uh, we have another invite to you for a new life in July, I think, June or July, uh, while we are uh, recording the album, maybe uh, until there we, you will have any other release with the SG or your other bands. So we want to invite you for another live in June or July. Oh. Are you with us? <laughs> that would be wonderful, brothers. You're, you're inviting oh, me to nice. come back on. So maybe I could tell shorter stories, right? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> shorter stories, right? Or or I'll just bring the grill right down here or go outside and I'll make food for all of us. We'll get that's Bill good. on here too. We'll feed him too. <laughs> Brother, with sauce, with I, sauce. I, 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 with, with, again, yes, please, everybody, with the sauce, get you the <laughs> hot sauce, um, you know, self-promotion, okay, whatever, you know, Viper. Oh, that's nice. That's what it is, man. Um, yes, I would be happy to. And by July, you know, I will have more updates on what records are done or almost done and the labels they'll be coming out with and lyric videos and stuff like that and you know, the whole nine yards, you know, but at some point 
you know, I don't know if what your guys' plans are. We could talk about it later. We make no promises to the fans that are watching. But at some point, I, you know, I've been to Argentina many a times. And when I, I toured with Fionor the first time, we went to Brazil and did like four or five shows. So, I, you know, wherever you guys are exactly at, you know, I'd love to come over there where it makes sense to play two, three, four shows and hang out and jam after I do the guest solo and sit in on a couple of songs and hang out and meet the people and, and have a good time. You know, it's, it would be a lot of fun. If, if all the stars line up for that to happen, that would be cool, but I'm happy to come on and do another interview and do an update. When you guys have the spot open, you know how to reach out to me. Thank you. I'm happy to do it. Thank you, love, David. E obrigado a todos que nos assistiram, estão aqui acompanhando, né, dando essa força para a gente sempre. E é isso aí. Tivemos a honra de estar com esse cara aí, o Debichenko, que é uma das minhas inspirações, né? Como guitarrista, desde o molequinho ouvindo o menor. Então, é uma é honra gigantesca aqui. Eu entrei através da música, então é exemplo a ser seguido. Thank you, David. I love you, man. Thank you. Thank you, I love Thank you, you brother. Guys. I'm glad we got to do this. It was well worth the wait. I hope all the fans enjoyed it and that you got a wealth of knowledge from me on what I'm doing, what I'm all about, because you can leave them with this, okay? There's one thing about me that has worked my whole life, and you can call it ego, whatever you want, but I stand by what I do, and that's the three A's, attitude, aggressiveness, and appearance, and it has worked for me my whole life, and I will continue to do it until I can't do it no more. Thank you for having me, guys. Hail and kill to all the Manowar hey, fans. Hey, kill, brother. Here to working with you guys this year. Thank you, David. Thank you. So, Obrigado, galera. Have a good night, man. Thank you a lot. Obrigado, yeah, buddy. I'll wait to hear from you on everything, and we'll go from there. Thank you, my friends. I had a wonderful time, and love you all, my friends and fans. Love you, man. See Thank ya. you, man. See ya. Ciao, ciao, Daniel. Thank you. Power and Power and